Hey, good morning again. It's Friday. Another edition of Conversations coming your way. One of the essential ingredients that will show up in a conversation where a Christian's participating is the ingredient of goodness. Goodness. Eugene Peterson translates it in the message, this is Galatians 5, as a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. A basic holiness permeates things and people. Goodness. Where does goodness come from? Goodness comes from way back, from the beginning. So when we start like this way, there are various creation myths, stories about how the world began. And uh, a lot of them talk about conflict. There's wars between the gods and, and the earth and the stars and the human beings. They're kind of like fallout, uh, afterthoughts of these battles between the gods that go on. Probably the most famous creation myth that's outside of the, the Bible's account of creation is uh, the Enuma Elish. Uh, and it's the story from early Mesopotamia, which talks about, well, I can't give you the whole story, but basically talks about this god Marduk who takes on the goddess Tiamat, and um, she's the goddess of chaos, and puts a net around her and then captures her, kills her, and cuts her into 12 pieces. And with the 12 pieces, Marduk makes the heavens and the earth. And then Marduk actually creates the human beings from the blood of the warrior god, Pengu. No, it's not Pengu, it's Kingu. Pengu, you gotta be my boy's age to get that joke, Pengu. Anyways, Kingu, this warrior god, Kingu. Anyway, the Bible's account for creation and the Bible's account for human beings has nothing to do with conflict, nothing to do with warrior gods or gods of chaos and cutting things up and destroying things. It's actually quite different. The Bible poetically and beautifully describes the story of God creating the heavens and the earth and bringing order out of chaos and providing homes to the various creatures and the various beings. It's really something else. And one of the phrases that comes out regularly in the creation story from the Bible is this phrase, and God saw that it was good. And God saw that it was good. Every day, and God saw that it was good. Right at the end of the sixth day, when God has now created the land animals, including the woman and the man, God stands back, looks at the whole scene and, and says, it's very good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's very good. There's just like goodness everywhere. And, and that's what's referred to here when, when Peterson translates goodness as a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. Goodness comes from, from the person of the holy God. Goodness does. It's beautiful. So fundamentally, you either believe that the planet and, and, and people are like in its core, good, the world is good, or you believe that this is a nasty, unkind, unsafe place that's very, barely worth getting out of bed for every morning, right? Christians believe that goodness is displayed in creation. And, and Christians believe, because of what Jesus said, that God has put goodness into those who believe in Jesus. A believer in Jesus chooses to believe that it's good chooses to go looking for goodness in situations and in conversations. So listen, we know it's not all good, right? There's still mosquitoes, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic and there are catastrophic events that happen from time to time. But fundamentally, Christians believe that this is good. Things and people in their original design are good. Flawed by sin, don't, don't, let me, don't get me wrong, of course, but fundamentally in their design, good. And they carry this basic holiness in them. What does that mean? It means that God made us in his image. God made creation to reflect his glory. So even the worst gangster has within him or her, you know, the DNA strand that points back to the one who made her or him. So that just changes the way we roll in conversations, doesn't it? Like we're not fighting people anymore. You know, we're not trying to win all the time. And, and, and we can be in these conversations looking to, I don't know, uncover that basic holiness, that goodness that God has planted in, in each person, even particularly those that we disagree with. We go looking for good. And if we can't even find that, then we can at least afford to be good because of who Jesus is. 
Okay. Somebody dumped eight bags of garbage behind the church shed last week, and uh, I found them on Sunday. Ticked me off. So I went through them. I know, I know it's gross. Before you get really grossed out, I washed my hands afterwards. And they were clear plastic bags. And I was looking for incriminating evidence, right? Envelopes, addresses, return envelopes, those return addresses, that sort of stuff. And I found them. Found the guilty party. Busted, baby. Guilty as sin. So I'm going to go drive that place. I took Seth with me, took some muscle with me, make sure I didn't get like outnumbered or, or overwhelmed. So drove to the address pulled up and this family's out front and I asked to speak to the person whose name was on the envelope and uh, they're like, they don't live here anymore. They moved out two weeks ago. They rented from us. We own it. We're cleaning it up and you know, we're trying to sell it. We want to get this thing going. So I'm like, okay, they haven't been around for two weeks. So this is their garbage, but they didn't dump it because this just got dumped last week. And so I'm starting to put one and one together again here, right? Because the owner's looking to get rid of some garbage that they're going to have too much of when it comes to garbage day. And so they have rolled through town and decided that the church was a good place to dump it. Guilty as sin. So I'm in this conversation with her. And I know she's done it. She knows she's done it, right? And uh, her boy's talking to her in another language that I don't understand. And so like, he seemed pretty contrite. And she's kind of like trying to wave him off, like kind of, Shush, 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 right? So we're in a showdown. So at this point, I want to come over the boards. Like, that's my plan. I got a plan here. Because I know the family dumped it, and she knows the family dumped it, and I can't prove it because I don't have their name on the envelopes, but I'm pretty sure. And then it kind of dawns on me. Hang on. They dumped it on a church. I'm the guy from the wealthy church down the road. Like, I'm on display right now about how Christians have conversations. Right? How Christians resolve conflict, disagreements. So what I want to do is to put all that garbage in my car, drive it out to her place, tear it open in the backyard and pour bacon grease all over it to attract the wild animals to it. But I realize, you know, that would be payback, but it wouldn't be what Jesus is all about. Because we, we have a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. And we choose goodness because that's the way God designed things. So we carried the garbage down to the roadside here at the church on Wednesday morning and the garbage people took it away and it's all good. No harm, no foul. You know, we chose goodness over revenge. And thanks be to God who rescues us some days even from ourselves. All right, go in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the friendship of the Holy Spirit today, tomorrow, forever. Amen. Amen.